Hey, what's going on everybody? It is your boy Jay Bailey and I'm back with another video. And before I get started, I want to give a quick shout out to two people in particular. Um, the first person is the person who bought me this microphone, one of my best friends. I, I really, really appreciate it, man. Um, so my voice sounds really, really clear, and really smooth. It's because your boy upgraded his audio. <laughs> And the next person I want to give a shout out to is um, the person who has been watching my videos for a while. His name will be appearing up on the screen here. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I'm not even going to try. But uh, he's been watching my videos for a while and he suggested I do a Windows challenge. And so here, here we are. I'm in a Windows VM. I'll be doing a Windows challenge today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, also, he has a YouTube channel of his own, so please go ahead and check that out. Alrighty. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the binary we have today is called kimi.exe, but first they gave us a readme file, so let's go ahead and read that. And let's see, all right, it's kimi. Okay, I don't want to read all that stuff, but. <laughs> so the rules here is what I'm, really, um, what, I'm, what I'm really interested in here. So first, no patching, no brute forcing, which that's fine. I don't think we've ever done that before in the past yet, so we don't have to worry about that. And he gave us a goal of to, and the goal is to create a working keygen. And so that's really important. And I think I've mentioned this in a few videos, but it's just always good to have a goal to work towards so you're not just aimlessly analyzing the binary, right? You, you want to be working towards something so you know if you're going down a rabbit hole. Anyways. Um, all right, so if you guys watched my channel before, you know that I usually create a notes.txt file. I'm not going to do that today since we have a readme already here. So I'm just going to be appending all any notes to this. And let's get started. And so another thing that I usually do, and this is in the wrong, sorry about that. <laughs> another thing that I usually do is I run a program called file on the Linux machine, but so we don't really have that. I'm going to use PE bear to inspect the file and see if we can find anything else about the binary before we begin our main analysis here. And we got that loaded up there. So I'm going to hit open. And so I like to just check out the file header just to see. All right, so here Intel 386, this is gonna be a 32-bit executable as you can see down here. And we see that the file is indeed executable there. If we go to the optional headers, we scroll down here. Let's see, we see that this is gonna be a .NET executable. So that makes things a little bit easier or at least it has the potential to because if they didn't do any obfuscation, then it'll be pretty easy to do our analysis when we actually open this up in DNSpy. So I also like to look at the imports here and I think this is kind of similar to running the nm command that I usually run on the Linux binaries. So here we have the DOL which I think is the Windows equivalent of like shared libraries and down here we have the actual function from the DOL that is be that's being used and this core exe main is what's used to actually instantiate a uh, the program, right? So, um, .NET is used like a virtual machine similar to Java, and so this core exe main, I believe, is the function that kind of gets things started. And all right, so we didn't figure out much from the binary. We still don't really know anything about it besides the fact that it's 32 bits and it's an executable. So another thing I like to do is, is to run strings on here, and I do that because sometimes you can just get a little bit more information about actual binary in question. So let's go ahead and get to our binary here. Let's see. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run strings. And by the way, so this is a this is a, like a really customized virtual machine. So you likely won't have strings if you're just kind of following you likely won't have strings in your path. So if you want to follow along exactly, I should have said this earlier, but um, I'll have like the link in the description where you can get all the tools in this VM. It's like a, a script that, that you can run and it'll just install everything. It's pretty cool. Anyways, strings on the binary. And we're going to do that. What is this thing called? That text. All right, I'm going to open the notepad plus plus. All right, and now let's just see if we can find any other good information about this binary that we can use to guide our analysis and we see some interesting things here so this check serial click there's create serial generate key 
So these are some things that we may want to look into when we actually look at this in a uh, DN spy. And I'm choosing these functions in particular because our goal is to create a key gen. And so obviously, you know, we're going to want to see how it's how the whatever we type in is being checked. We want to see how they're generating any keys that we may need to know about how they create, you know, creating the, the, these are some things that we will want to look at further when we actually look load look this up into, into DN spy. So it's just this is why I kind of do this initial triage before I actually begin just looking at it in the tool because we have to understand where, where we got to go. Let's see, is there anything else in here? Um, so this here looks like it'll be the like the success message there. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. And then failed is like right below it. So it's just an incorrect serial. And then we have this Papa Nyquil, which is the name of the author. But the fact that it's here kind of makes me think that maybe that's actually a valid username, password, valid something. Let's see. And also, let me just go ahead and let's see, where are those functions at? So these functions here are like functions of interest. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these guys. All right. So now that we've done some initial analysis, actually, let me just go and make sure that there's nothing else. I don't think there was, but let's just see for completeness. Yep, nothing. All right. So now let's go ahead and open this up in DN Spy. So forgive my computer. Sometimes she likes to act a little bit slow sometimes, especially on this Windows VM. Let's see. Open. It's actually taking a sweet time. <laughs> I'm, I'm just messing with you. I'm, I'm the, you know, she, she, she knows I love her. She knows I love her. All right. So open that up here and Okay, so yeah, she's taking her time. That's okay. Go ahead and think. All right. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at... So th this is kind of what I'm interested in here. And these are two... I think these are like classes. Yeah, these are two different classes here. And we'll go to the program class. And we see that all they're really doing is defining this main function, which is the, you know, the main function. These two aren't really... Of interest to us but this here is, is what's going to run when we when the actual program gets started so this is like the first thing that's gonna run and it, it you know it calls this guy here and so if we go there we click on it it brings us here and so you see so if you also notice that I didn't I didn't do like my little pseudo C and that's really no reason to do that right because like this is pretty much net here I mean I'm, I've never coded in dot net but this looks like it's dot net so it's like there's no point to try and do like a disassembly to see when it's just like this. All right. And so let's see. So we're initializing the components here. So we see that um, the text box one is going to be, let's see, our username. Because see text box one has the label name of one username there. Let's see. Text box two looks like it's the password. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting here. So they're trying to throw us off, right? So this this here is, is setting up the exit button. But if you notice, the text that's going to show for the exit button is actually check. And what that means is that um, that means is they're trying to trick us. So they're trying to go, make us go down the wrong path. So this exit click one is likely the function that we're going to want to look at. But let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and look at this really quickly. You see, this check serial is actually the the, the text is going to be exit there, and we see the the action is, is this check serial click, which is what we saw earlier. So I'm just going to fall for this, right? I'm putting this on calls because obviously we're not falling for it, but just for just for demonstration purposes, you know, we we go here and we and we see this nice little function generate key, which seems like you know it's very attractive. We want to look at it, we want to see what it's doing, and then it's just 
it's not doing anything but it just closes right so you know not not too interesting there so let's go ahead and go back and let's go and see what exit click one is doing so we go there and now we also we also saw create serial so this is this is another function this is interesting right we can look at this so we go to create serial which is right here and we see there's this loop here and this loop is doing some I guess some pretty interesting things here but if you notice we don't even have to analyze what that loop is doing because this here is an empty string and for i is zero i is less than the length of text which is the empty string i plus plus so this loop is never going to execute we ain't gotta worry about it we can just ignore it so let's ignore it <laughs> so this close app here and this is where it gets interesting so we see the Papa Nyquil right here, right? So this is this, that string that we saw earlier when we were on strings. It's going to assign to this text variable. And we see that, you know, for I is less than the text box length, text box one length. In this case, if you recall, text box one is going to be our username. And then we do these things in here. So we're just appending the username, the actual letter, or not the letter. <laughs> The actual number one the actual number three and then we you see we were doing a lot of replacements there and then finally we add the length of the username and we mod that with sorry we XOR that with i and then we compare our password which is text box two if it's not equal to this text here then we get this error else then we are good well not really else but you know else <laughs> and so if you if you notice we don't really even have to give it a a username right so if we just passed this as the password and didn't give it a username we'd, we'd get this good job conquered string and you say well, well why is that well because you're similar to up here right where the, there's this for loop is, does, doesn't run because this text string is empty if this user if this if our username text box is empty this loop here is never going to run so let me go ahead and show you that real quick So I'm not going to give it a username. I'm just going to go ahead and put in Papa Nyquil for the password. Good job. So pretty simple. But we have to remember our goal here, right? Was to create a working key gen. And so we have to stick to the rules. We won't break the rules. We'll, we'll do what they say. And so to create a working key gen is actually extremely simple for this challenge because we pretty much have the key gen right here. All we have to do is, well, at least what I did, I copied this into a Python script. So let me just show you really quickly. You might have already seen this earlier. Gen key, what is it? All right, here we go. I guess I could do no that plus plus. Hey, open up faster. Okay, and it did. Uh, but, but I won't be able to run it this way. All right, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, sorry, edit with idle. on baby open it up open it up okay there it goes see I'm telling you, she can be taking her sweet time with this stuff all right so as you can see here I, I, I made this so it's the we can give it any username that we want and it'll generate a working password for that username so here we see we got our text pop and like just how they did in the in the in the, in the, in the challenge and then here all I'm doing is I just pretty much copy and pasted that entire string in here and all I did was change some things to make it more Pythonic right so I, I, I casted this to a string changed this to a lowercase r and then casted this one here to a string as well so if I run this program any username I give it will be it'll spit out a valid username so if I go ahead and run this here and I give it a username and then copy this and this guy here. Yep. Oops. All right. And moment of truth. Got it. All right. And so that's pretty much it for this challenge. Um, like I said, this was a fairly easy challenge here. Um, I really just kind of wanted to get my feet wet with Windows because I've never really done this. Windows binary before so I hope you guys enjoyed this video 
Um, as a quick recap, if you're able to solve this challenge by um, look openness up in DNSPY and just pretty much following the function calls until we got to the function of interest. And then we noticed that they tried to throw us down some loops right here. Like, like remember we, we saw this check zero click and generate key. And we saw this little nonsense here. We didn't really fall for any of those things. So we just immediately went to this. And we noticed that we, we don't even have to give it a username. We can just give it Papa Nike as the password. And that'll be, we'll, we'll get this correct string. Um, but otherwise we can just copy and paste this into, um, what is that thing called? Python, change some things up and we'll be good to go. So you guys like this video, you learned some new things. Give me a like, I really appreciate it. If you have any question that maybe I didn't address or just something just went completely overhead, please feel free to ask it in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to answer any and all your, all of your questions. If there's something that there's like a tool you think I should be using for windows analysis, if there's a tool that maybe I used incorrectly or something here, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm, I'm very new to windows. So, you know, any tips you guys have, I, I'm open to hearing them. If you like this video, you want to see more of this type of content. Do not forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. So you're notified when new videos go live. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.